all of the evidence, the physical evidence, the eyewitness evidence, the man bringing him through the airport, getting him on the plane without a passport, his father going and warning the government, saying the State Department, the fact that he was kept off the terror watch list to come to the U.S., it's the same M.O. we've seen a million times. Now you have confirmed someone on the plane videotaping him with his camera on him from start to finish. Guaranteed he was told it was part of a drill. That's how they set these young idiots up. And now they'll drug him up, torture him, body double him whenever they have to and have a big show trial out of it. Now they're saying 25 Al-Qaeda's are going to hit you. The government's got to take all your rights and your bank account, by the way, to keep you safe. Paul Watson's written some key articles at prisonplanet.com. So is Kurt Nemo. Paul Watson, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Alex. Okay, run through the evidence, the details, the background in this segment, a little bit of the next. Go ahead. Well, yeah, this uh, individual, um, Mulatab, I think his name is, is Motolab is the pronunciation. He's a Nigerian that um, bought a ticket for a round-trip flight which cost him $2,800 from Nigeria to Detroit via Amsterdam. And uh, for that huge trip, he only had one small carry-on bag for his luggage, which was the first red flag. Then, of course, he's on the terror watch list. His father warns U.S. intelligence a month ago that he thinks he's a threat. He's accompanied by this, um, what eyewitnesses who were on the plane described as a sharp-dressed man. It later emerged that he was um, Indian-looking. He lied about the circumstances of the uh, underwear bomber, said he was a Yemen refugee, even though he's Nigerian. And uh, basically, he got him on the plane without a passport via whatever means. Now, what's interesting about that is that after the incident, when he was arrested, um, eyewitnesses also described a second man being detained by the FBI, but the FBI says they only ever detained the um, terrorist. So what happened to that man, whether he was a handler, it seems pretty clear that he was involved deeply. And then, of course, you've got the reports, which you just mentioned about the man calmly filming the entire flight from start to finish and filming the entire um, scenario where he attempted to detonate this device. Now, from every fact, it, to me, it seems that this was a contrived scare. It was never meant to blow up the plane. Um, and now the reports are saying that even the um, bomber himself said that he never meant to blow up the plane, and that the liquid and the explosive devices he had were not enough to blow up the plane and of course all he managed to do was to set fire to the wall of the plane and those fires were soon extinguished and the result of all of this is that now the uh, governments of the united states and britain are saying and in fact that the british government this morning is saying that as a result of this incident the use of full body scanners, which of course produce a naked image of passengers, will have to be implemented at every airport. And, this and notice this is right as it's being implemented in every major airport and as people are refusing the naked body scanners that record your children's bodies, your bodies, in a biometric database so they can scan you from a distance. That's the real reason. Oh, now if you refuse, oh, you're going to have to pay. So this is all about making us submit. And the airports are the main beta testing centers for society to train us how to be good slaves. That's right, because after the um, Richard Reed shoe bombing attempt, that was when they ordered us all to take off our shoes when we walked through security. So now as a result of this, we're going to be ordered to go through this naked scanning machine. And the importance of it is that... And if a person ever was to pull something out of their rectum, we'll all have to have proctology exams uh, at the That's airport. Right. And, and, yeah. and we're not joking about this. They're, Homeland Security is looking at making you wear taser bracelets, all of you. This is your dog training. This is you being brought to your knees.
Go ahead. And um, what's important about it is that in any major city where you visit a public building or a museum or anything like that, you now have to go through airport-style scanning machines. This is being introduced on our streets and in our shopping malls. This is the government building. circling the wagons against the people. This whole airport system, as Ridge said seven years ago, is the plan to take over complete society. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not only that a sharp-dressed man in a suit went past security flashing some type of credentials. Imagine this, at a European international airport, somebody coming out of Nigeria, they go through the security checkpoint, flash their credentials, and gets him on the plane without a passport or ID. And lying and saying he was from Sudan. Then he gets on the plane. Everybody's marveling. Why is a guy sitting there a few aisles back videotaping this this uh, young black man continually? Well, that's the handler. It's okay, Sonny. See, I'm here filming it. This is part of a drill. We're filming this for the drill. The airline knows. You have the security man bring you on board the plane. You can be part of this. And the same thing happened on 7-7. Those guys had been approached. They'd been part of drills. A few of them escaped. They got chased down and machine gunned. That was in British TV and radio that day, but got shut down. Witnesses reported the police chasing them down, gunning them down. They then thought separately that uh, the young uh, Brazilian electrician was one of them, so they executed him. Witnesses said they walked up, shot him 12 times in the head. Execution style. Stood up and said, all right, job done. And the guy said, no, no, please, no. It's so sick how they run these operations. It's just like the Fort Hood shooter. Witnesses reported hearing gunfire continue after he was on the ground. They reported multiple shooters. Same thing with Columbine. The Russians have been caught running similar ops. You go into a school or a building, you shoot a bunch of people, you dress up one of the people you blast as the terrorist, you in police uniforms escape out the back door because you are the police. And if you don't understand that this is done by all major governments, you're living on another planet. It's been declassified that our government did it several hundred times under Operation Gladio and the NATO option in Europe. Every time they wanted to demonize some political group, they'd stage bombings and blame it on their political enemies. But you are the enemy, the general population of the West. This is all for you. Remember when we got the secret Homeland Security and MIAC documents? How all of Homeland Security and NORTHCOM is set up for gun owners, veterans, conservatives, libertarians, people that want to, quote, bring the bankers to justice? That's the illegitimate government. How are the bankers going to have their heist? They set up an internal police force. They stage terror attacks as a pretext to clamp down on the people they're robbing. Period. And I wished over and over and over and over and over again on Friday, on Christmas, when I heard about this, I said, let it be a real lone nut. I know there's some real Muslim terrorists out there. Let it, let it be. But as soon as I saw all the hype, I said, oh, no. And then it came out that he was led on the plane and protected. And there's a guy on the plane videotaping him. And his dad called up and warmed. And his dad's a high-level banker. And he was on the terror list. But the U.S. government had him taken off the terror list. I mean, they put congressmen on that thing. They put a million more like a million and a half. In the last year, they don't give you the numbers anymore, but it was over a million, 200,000. And they just put innocent people on it. And now they say gun owners are going to be on it. And if you got bad credit, you're going to be on it. But this guy's running around publicly at university two years ago saying, I want to carry out jihad. Clearly, they're hired to try to flush out other Muslim students and set them up. Guaranteed. I saw this with McVeigh. We saw this with Lee Harvey Oswald. We saw this with Sirhan Sirhan. It never ends. Muhammad Atta, trained at U.S. military bases on record. And then the media just goes, oh, well, we're not going to discuss why they were trained at bases. 
All right, I'm going to shut up and let Watson finish, and I'm going to get on to some other news. It just, it's so obvious. I mean, Watson, the media always loves this psychology. I had Atlantic Monthly here a few weeks ago, and I had a bunch of other newspapers and magazines the last few weeks, and they always say the same cliche. They say, don't you just want to believe the government's doing this because that brings order to the world and, and it's less scary than, 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 than rogue terrorists? And I said, really? A government that runs my life and surveils everything I do, that has the power to destroy me through taxes, it's less scary to think random guys in a cave did this. It's a lot more scary to know the government did it and that there's a giant police state grid in place. But it's that cliche of, oh, we just we just want to believe it's 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 the government. No, I wanna believe Al Qaeda's real. I wanna believe it.